Hey guys. <clears throat> so I just basically upgraded my setup so far. Um, I added in um, my my headset with a microphone. Um, I got a ring light. Um, so before, if you were looking at some of my streams, my face was pretty dark. So let me just give you an example. This is what the this is what it used to look like. <laughs> so. I added in a ring light so even if I was the room was totally dark you'd still be able to see my face um, so it's a lot better right now um, I have some news for um, 0 0.17 that's coming out there was an event that the devs had done um, but and we got some information but there's a lot of stuff that's gonna be teased um, that's new um, because we're gonna we are content creators and we're, and they're moderators They let us get a sneak peek of what's gonna be coming out for the new patch. I can tell you it's really exciting um, compared to the patches that we've had we've had a lot of patches on gameplay um, This patch is gonna be a little bit different. There's gonna be a lot of changes. I can't get into specifics um, The stuff I can be specific about I'm actually gonna talk about because they've teased it um but the other stuff I'm gonna kind of hold off um, the, the cool thing is I've basically gotten my new iPad um, I'm waiting for my new controller and my new case um, it's pretty much the exact iPad I have currently it's just that it's 256 gigabytes versus 64 which is gonna be pretty helpful um, I got some new tools to allow me to connect an extra port to the side so probably might do a stream on either Saturday or Sunday I'm trying again to see if I can play the game with a keyboard and a trackpad to see how it plays compared to if we're playing it um, just uh, if we're just playing it with a just a USB keyboard I mean a Bluetooth keyboard silly me um, but yeah so there's a there's a lot of cool stuff like I said I got my headset to help with the sound um, I've got my ring light to help with um, the visuals so you can actually see my face um, instead of it being really dark because the last few that I did I was just looking at it, I'm just like man I cannot even see myself and a few months ago the lighting looked better and I just don't know what happened like it just fell off a cliff so the ring light wasn't even expensive it's like 20 bucks um, it's a LED so and it works really well I spent last night setting everything up um, I'm right now in the catalyst black group the reason I jumped into here is there's some stuff that I want to show you that they teased but also I want to go into the streaming section um, and update um, the stream I couldn't stream the event but what I do is a lot of these um, dawn camps and other events that they have I actually do a local recording on my side um, I'm gonna see next time that I'm gonna actually do it if I can actually manipulate the sound coming out of the discord and give it its own channel on the stream so I can pump up the volume on it so it's a lot louder compared to what it's been in the last few ones and um, I added the microphone too because it's noise canceling. Um, like if I was to bring the microphone up, you shouldn't really be able to hear me as well. My voice should like cut out. The other feature is if I have a phone call or if something's coming through, I can also mute myself. And then I can put the sound back on, which is a lot better than what I've been doing in the past. Um, so I'm gonna do 0 0.17 news um, a lot of the guys are also playing Paragon arenas in C so I'm probably gonna try to join in to do that also after I cover some of the stuff that, that we saw here uh, 
Um, so what I'm going to be doing too is just sharing that I'm streaming. Um, I usually go on the Catalyst Black server. And just do this. Um, the thing that's exciting about the new patch that's coming up, I think a lot of the people who haven't been playing or who's like, there's nothing really to do in the game and stuff like that, they'll be happy to know there's a, a lot of changes. And I think with the new game mode that's going to be dropping, it's going to be really fun um, for people to actually get back and try to play the game again versus um, just like not doing anything with it. Now, nah, I'm going to be going into PA too, um, but I'm going to try to give you some information as much as I can give without breaking the rules that they set up because they, they literally said not to really give too much info about it. But I'm going to be joining in PA also. So because um, if I'm willing to play it as long as there's people playing it, I hate playing it 1v1 and I hate playing it against bots. Like those two ways of choose are not fun, really. Um, but let me just see. Yeah. So so interesting thing is. Um, some of the information that we have been getting in about it is I'm going to show you an announcement. There's an actual new mode coming to the game. Um, so the new mode is called Hydra and it's going to be a prototype. And what's cool about Hydra is Hydra plays a lot. Like if you've ever heard of the game Killer Queen Black, um, I love the game so much after watching it and figuring out how it plays that I actually have a PC version for me my kids and my son since i bought a four pack we gifted one to a friend of my son's and like we have four people who can actually play killer queen black yesterday me and my kids played it on my pc um two of us with um usb i mean with bluetooth actually we're connected through usb with um controllers and my son was playing on the keyboard and what was interesting is we we worked on teams of three um, and we were playing against bots and we didn't like win every game. Some of the games, the bots actually won like outright beat us three games in a row. And it was like, what the hell? So we're not good enough to go play real people <laughs> until until I feel I can beat bot matches like like 99 percent of the time, like comfortably. I'm not ready to play real people. So that's what we're doing right now. We're just playing bot matches. And I try to challenge my kids um, playing them as the queen. And then they were playing the game as, what do you call it, players. I was a 2v1 and they were just handing my head to me. Like my, my kids are actually better at playing queens than I am. And I'm, I'm still trying to get a little bit more comfortable with it. I'm not real good at it right now. Um, but playing the workers, trying to do economy and snail victories are fun. So what's cool about, I just mentioned stuff that literally you guys don't know about. So Killer Queen Black, the way the game works is, is three ways to win. It's one's called a military victory, one's called an economic victory, and the other one's called a snail victory. The way military victory works is if you kill the opposing queen three times, you win military there are these little berries that are all over the map that you use to upgrade your character, your drone character to a warrior or give it speed, shields or stuff like that. Um, and if you take those berries, it's these little holes that you have to fill in. If you can collect all the berries that are required for that round, it's called the economic victory. So that's one. Uh, and the final way of winning it is this is giant snail sitting in the middle of the map and sometimes it's near the top sometimes near the bottom sometimes it's dead center in the middle and then these there's these um goal posts at either end for each team a blue team and a gold team and whoever can get 
the snail there first, you can actually win the game by just riding the snail to the to the goal. So there's three ways to win. And what's so cool about Killer Queen Black is you can pressure people to do other things while you're playing. So I can start riding the snail and force the queen to stop paying attention to the other queen on my team. And we could kill the queen by baiting it into coming after the snail. Or while one guy is forcing the snail to move, we could be running around throwing those berries in the hole trying to get ec economic victory or if we all just want to get a military victory all the drones the three other drones that are there decides to just jump in and become warriors and the queen on our side and the drones all start chasing down the queen trying to kill it so it's it's ridiculous that's literally what this new mode is um the military victory in this game is done by you it's a 5v5 mode military victory in this game is called dominate um the way you get to dominate the domination victory is you're going to have to kill the other team's players three times each so there's five players on each team you have to get 15 kills and those 15 kills only count <laughs> three times per player so after i kill one player three times there's lights that you see above people green means you have three lives <laughs> excuse me yellow means you have one life red means i mean you have two lives red means you have one once i knock you out of those lives killing you after that counts as nothing it doesn't count to the 15. you have to kill every individual player five times to get a domination victory next way you're gonna win the game is called the harvest victory there's the central outpost in the middle that you have to control if you control said outpost they're going to be shards um spawning on the map and if you can collect up to 20 of those i believe was the number that i heard but x number of shards is needed to be collected to the, on that center outpost if you drop the shards in while you control the center outpost it's going to your shot your shard score you reach the max shard score that you need you do a harvest victory um, and the final one is called overthrow. Um, so the idea is there is no snail in this game or as one person was joking, a gold toad from back in the VG days. The idea is there's a harvester on, I mean, an overseer on each side. If you kill that overseer, you win the game. So like, it's just like the idea in Quilla, uh, Killer Queen Black, but now you can actually do it with three. It, this is also a three ways to win. But again, as they always say in Catalyst Black, they put their own spin on it. There is nothing to remove over it called a snail. What's interesting is this uh, 3v3 MOBA called Fangs that's in development. And it also does a three type win, but you're playing heroes like either League or heroes like um, VG used to have. And it's the same concept. It's uh, it's a triple way to win. There's a they actually have a phoenix that you can ride, which is literally a snail, <laughs> and they have these things called um, I believe relics. Like you collect them, and you collect up to three of those things. That's a economic victory. And then they actually have the domination victory. And I believe if you kill the players. Again, like a certain number of time, then you get it. No, actually, it has to do with, um, let me see, what was it again? I don't think they ever did it. But I think you each each player has a certain number of times they can die. And it's very similar to what they're doing here um, in Catalyst Blacks for their overthrow, I mean, their nomination victory. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, this mode is probably going to be the mode I'm going to be playing exclusively what's cool about this mode is unlike every other mode in catalyst black it's got no drop in drop out uh, give me a second
yeah like i said this works a lot better for me versus um the past like i like you all would hear my phone calls and everything so it's a lot better but yeah like i said this is probably this, the one i'm gonna play what i was gonna say is there is no drop in drop out in this mode the way it works is before the game the game actually starts it's a net 90 second setup period and the way it works is people can drop in and drop out of the game at that point once that 90 second period is done based on the people that are in the game you're gonna have a reshuffling of all of the available players and what's gonna happen is it's gonna try to balance out the teams so you ain't gonna have myself and a bunch of veteran players sitting on one team and then the team just stacked with a bunch of new guys so it's gonna be a nice mixture of players that way the one thing that's different is if you have a team right now teams are going to be teams of three but in the next update 0 0.18 it's gonna be teams of five if you go in as a team into this mode your team actually your team actually stays together which is really nice um, so there will actually be a way for you to play as a team in this mode so once it's 5v5 what would be kind of cool is I don't know if they fix some of the bugs that you have right now currently with um, parties where parties spawn independent games I don't know if people are going to be able to join in to live games as parties or people are going to be able to see parties um, as live games if they fix either one of those it doesn't really matter because what's gonna happen is you create a party of three I create a party of three and then we try to join each other's game if we can't do it that way one person creates a party of three and then everybody else joins onto the game that they're started or vice versa I create a game by myself as the person parties of three join so like either way or way you do it you should be able to find a way to actually do like little mini tournaments so once this mode drops out um hive used to have a game night on saturday i'm gonna be hosting those game nights because this is gonna be like crazy fun um it's gonna be like shades of when we used to play ctf and even tide um large groups of people like maybe three or four people or even five five people on each side playing and we're definitely going to set up VC um, on Discord so I can actually record it and each team will be on their own VC. Because what's going to be kind of cool about this game mode, um, primals are going to be pretty interesting too. Um, because you'll be able to, they've done a pass on primals um, this patch. So it's going to be interesting to see like what changes happen. And what's going to be kind of cool about it is it's going to make a difference now on the builds that you can have like let's say if I was playing with Hexecutor from Hive right um, he is like a lights out killer like that guy he's like a kill assassin guy right I actually have a double support assassin um, a double support assassin uh, primal hunter build that I use um, and it's pretty effective it's good for sustaining people so he would be like the guy like I don't care about my lives as much as I care about his lives so I would try to keep him alive so he could just run around the map killing people so you can get the domination victory right um so the other way I would play too is my builds that I have personally they're all designed to take out objectives so I could play personally for overthrow victories because I my builds are designed to crush large what do you call it large bosses so like I have builds designed to do the third the third way you could win so we could pressure teams like forcing them to either take me out or take him out or we could play where okay we're gonna do two sustains to protect the executor we don't care about our lives we're gonna make sure this guy survives and he has all the health he needs to run around just jacking people up and we could win that way or if we get a guy like max bob on our team who's also on hive he decides that he's just gonna run out shards we have a person running with him again support protecting him and then we do a harvest victory so like the ideas of how you can play 
is going to be big people playing different types of build is going to be big um what we're hoping eventually is like they'll start rewarding guys who are playing support a bit more like give them points for healing people um give people points for taking out primals because like currently in the game you don't get you don't get any of that so that's what we're hoping is going to be a, a change that happens in the future um that's something i would love to see i've been wanting something like that since 0 point like 3 0 point 4 once score started being at, i mean 0 point 3 when stores started being added um to actually be able to reward players to actually able to be able to reward players um to actually be able to reward players for doing those specific events so yeah like this mode is going is going to be big um the thing i can say and it's not really revealing too much is a lot's gonna change um people keep saying should i buy this should i buy that i can tell you it's it's going to be a big change they've been talking about they're going to be changing economy they've been talking about they're going to be changing the shop so i would say for the safest thing you can do as a player right now hold on to your stuff if you don't need to shard stuff to open chests don't do it just hold on to your shard i mean to, you just hold on to your mods if you've got shards don't go be buying crystals in the shop don't do that hold on to your shards if you got dust hold on to that like just hold on to your stuff because the changes are going to be so large it's safer for you to hold on to what you have than to start going on a spending spree and trying to get everything now because you're gonna probably regret it more than you're gonna be like oh yeah i did great because too much is happening for me to be able to say like yeah if you did this right now this would be the best thing for you to me i think go into a holding pattern hold on to your quints hold on to your shards hold on to your marks hold on to your mods and then we'll get to see what's going on because all another thing i can hint at is if people say like game needs a shakeup, forget a shakeup. we're getting an earthquake it's that big it's gonna be big big changes cloaking has a test to it from what i've seen and know about i can attest to that and i can tell you is um I'm really excited about the changes. It's going to be a lot of stuff happening. It's going to be good for me too because I'll be able to create a lot of new content. Um, it's so much content. I think I'm going to start asking other people if they can like spotlight on one thing and then I'm going to just link to their video. Somebody can go watch that and they can link back to my video um, that's going to talk about a very specific thing so somebody can watch that or we could even just jump onto each other's streams or videos and talk about these things together just so people can actually get um, pretty good information and see um, some of the creators that are out there um, the way the way everything works here you can see this crystals there um, it I don't know depending on like they keep showing that teaser they show you where everything got blown up with the mods that's literally the thing i i i don't know the one thing is like i said it's exciting because there's going to be so many changes but i don't know how those changes are going to play in game because i remember reading the borson um in 0 0.13 going wow it got buffed five times and nerfed twice the borson's gonna be great and the borson was the worst gun in the game so until you actually play it you never know it could it could be the best update ever or it could suck i can't tell you so all i could just tell you is i know there's going to be changes but from what um zekin has been saying and what a lot of the the developers are saying is yeah a lot of things are viable a lot of things are going to be viable um primal hunter is going to be viable um pa i mean um seeker is going to be viable primalist is going to be viable everything's gonna be viable compared to what it feels like now so that's the one thing that they've told us um 
Um, Z Kent was talking about he has a, I believe, a ranger, a double ranger, double sniper build that he plays in this mode, and it works really well. And the way they said it is, the way the map works, every build has a place where it can shine in it. So, like I said, support's gonna be big. Specifically, if you have healing totem, um, healing totem is super strong. So if you people have been asking for a nerf now i'm starting to understand why i was just looking at healing totem last night in the game healing totem heals really fast way faster than it should like you're not healing 158 a second like if you have yours at level 20 you're actually healing like 158 times three per second i thought it was just times two no it's like times three per second you're healing that fast it heals too fast i don't know if i was on double but it heals even on one. You're healing almost 158 every half a second. And I think they, they, that's going to be nerfed. Because they're saying like, yeah, I don't think it's healing right. I think it heals a little too much. I think that's one of the issues. But it's still going to be strong for supporting your teammates. It's still going to be a big, big thing. Um, the, the idea is, Zekan also said, hey, get good in this mode. Because this is probably going to be their main competitive mode that's going to come out when the game comes out and if it is it's going to be fun as hell so what i'm hoping is they'll start adding at best of three um in 0 0.18 and if not it's definitely something to um talk about because that's one of the cool things about killer queen black when you play this when you play killer queen black when you, your team of four v4 goes in you're playing five matches across multiple maps um and whoever wins the best of five so whoever hits three wins the wins that set so i'm hoping to create a little something like that so we don't have to keep track of how many did you just win did you win two did you win one like you could actually have a counter each team winning that way and then we only need to do the dido in and out for the set but if they don't do it that way, if, if they don't do it best of three, it's still going to be way more fun than what we're doing right now, where everything is random and your team f has to fight bots until people jump in and even tie. Because it's one of the things that they plan on fixing. I just don't know if it was fixed this patch or if it's going to be fixed next patch. One of the things I'm definitely going to be testing is to see if putting myself on a one-man team if I respawn games or if I go on a one-man team if I can see the active games that are there and I can just jump into one because if teams can jump into active games what we just do to get a five-man team is you do two three-man teams two two-man teams and then everybody one person spawns the game and everybody just jump onto their game that's it that will guarantee a 5v5 I, depending on the strengths of people that's how the teams are going to be but the, yeah, that's that's what it is like i would definitely not find super strong players and be on their team i might most likely put myself on an opposing team but definitely we would want to get a nice mix of people some new some old and then we can just jump in and that's kind of like what i want to do on the streams too but yeah um that that's pretty much it um like i said i said the best thing you can do is right now hold on to your stuff if you don't need to get rid of mods unless you plan on sharding them to open up a chest just leave it alone if you don't don't upgrade stuff don't um put stuff into what do you call it don't um infuse stuff right now just just hold just hold on to everything hold everything you got um give me a second i'm just gonna get my plug because i don't want to um for this to go out while i'm playing because when i play on the battery get drained and this is probably the last few times i'll be playing on this old ipad um once i get my case for it i'm probably going to be switching over to my new ipad completely and this one's going to be just for viewing stuff and other things and i'm going to get um i got to transfer a lot of files like yesterday that's what i pretty much was working on setting up the ipad I found a lot of really cool tools. If people are interested on doing music, if people are interested on 
doing um, video editing. I found on iOS, there's a lot of really good free tools. Like I paid uh, $79 for the video editor that I use, but I really like it. It has really cool features. Um, I found a free, a free app called VN that's a video editor that's 100% free and I think it's more powerful than that editor <laughs> who knew and I, I it's not super brand new but it's it's there um, and I people who are interested in doing content and people who have iPads or iPhones that thing lets you like do animation keyframe animation lets you animate text lets you do all this crazy stuff um, corrections and mixing things so um, I'll definitely try to find the links to those two apps and put them in just for people to one if you want to use original music that you create or get into that free um, and then the editor is also free um, give me a second Yeah, so I'm gonna switch over onto CB. I'm gonna be playing. Um, the C guys are actually playing Paragon Arenas. I'm not that great at it. Uh, my builds don't work 100% in it. And the way some of the changes they did where they reduce your health like crazy, um, I don't have builds that work as well as they used to. But again, also playing a 1v1 against bots where your bots do nothing and the bots you're playing against are attacking you mercilessly while the other person's attacking you mercilessly isn't fun <laughs> so that's just the truth like like it's like, like the least fun way to play a, a game and that's 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 um paragon arenas mainly in a nutshell uh, let's see if there's anybody on i'm not seeing anybody right now but yeah it's not it's not my one of my favorite um, modes to play at all. Um, another thing about Paragon Arena is, is it's supposed to be teams. Let's hear it for the newcomer. It's it's beautiful. It's got really cool features in it, but if there's not a lot of people playing, it's not really fun. And what what happened is when the mode came out, the reason everybody loved playing it at first was because we used to be everybody used to be able to play together um they had created something called the kiosk mode and inside the kiosk mode some people on ios found found a cheat to to get lots of duplicate um gear and because of that it required them to create a new patch and then there was another bug that was happening a lot that they patched also so what started happening is there were three different versions of the game out in the wild at the same time. One for iOS, one for SS, and one for GeoBeta. And by having three, vers three versions, everybody started getting split off. There, there are people like Jawbone who plays all the time, but he's on Canadian GeoBeta. He's on the he's on a GeoBeta account. So he'd be playing and I couldn't play with him um there would be other people um who are on Android That's a nice one. um they had a different build and then everybody else on iOS had a different build so it was three different builds sitting there that this couldn't play with fight. each other so it became just bot matches I mean I got all the the levels that I could in it and then I stopped playing and I got so accustomed to just getting the levels All right, your moment. with our people that I was getting annoyed when people would be in the match messing up my level, my my level harvesting. Yeah, sit down. So in, that's you. that was that was pretty much the issue with it. Hey, in the gallery, I'm coming for you. Like I said, one v one sucks. Here we go. 
I'm just high enough level that my bots will do nothing against any players that I play. They just run around, never shoot. They don't do anything. See what I mean? <laughs> why are they not shooting at anybody? Why, why are they like all... They're all just doing nothing. Like, it's weird. What I'm talking about. Nice work. It's weird. We're starting soon. But yeah, I'm thinking the new mode that's going to drop is going to be... Um, we go. I don't think a lot of people won't be playing Eventide. Because, I, as I was saying, there is no drop in, drop out once the match starts. Um, it basically, lo you're locked in. And everybody just has to play. Um, there is no ah uh, ah. Uh, there is no oh uh, uh, I, I I don't like that I'm not winning. I'm gonna just I'm just gonna stop playing here and. Settle down. Nice work. They love you. And I'm gonna drop out and screw you over. None of that can happen. Or you're winning and then all of a sudden, three people drop into the game and then make your game completely lopsided. Brace yourself. Two new guys and one one veteran, and they're not on your team. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Who's next? This is why we fight. One down. You pull this back, I'll polish your mask. Brush it off. Join the next one. This is how we improve. Is that a person? Because that was pretty good. Don't cry to me. Two to go. Oh, my bad. We go. It's not even a person. I'm just telling you, the bots play a lot better than you expect. Oh look, I'm I'm ready by myself. Brilliant. <laughs> Actually, Seeker does work. It's just that you have to have a high spirit well build. Because if you're playing Seeker right, you gotta finish or be finished. If you're playing Seeker right, you should prime them almost instantaneously after picking up three or four things. That's how you play Seeker correctly. So, if you if that's not what's happening, your build is is off because um, Spirit Well builds still broken. I still can get primals in like three pickups. <laughs> if it's three big pickups, I get it almost in two, two and a two and a in a what do you call it ammo I can get primal because I have I have legendary spirit wells all over my builds and I don't think in the update that's coming out that's gonna work out as well so this is where you dig deep. yeah it's a 1v3 I, I gotta dig real deep so here's one of the biggest problems in the game that's not ideal. It's not ideal. I have to fight each guy individually to be able to actually win. I can't face them both at once. Time to close this out. Yeah, you, you go hide in there. I need this. Thank you. That's beautiful. It in, it, it, it's not ideal. <laughs> I now choose chosen. Head back to camp. The idea of the game, the idea of the mode is great. It's just the bots suck, <laughs> so it's super hard to play with bots. Um, they've been promising stuff like 
in the future roadmaps. I remember when we were talking about um, 15 and 16, like some of the stuff that F uh, Fluffy Bunny she was talking about. She was talking about that eventually you and even on Punchbot, they were talking about eventually you'd be able to go on quests to go find stuff. Like those are things like I'm hoping get implemented sooner than later. Um, it's one of the biggest gripes that you have like playing this current version is I'm stuck like I mean that's my biggest issue I'm, I'm just stuck um, I can't really level anything else up until I get a mask but I can't get a mask because it only comes out in random um, with a random number generator or RNG um, I'm at the mercy of this game trying to get the last mask I've been playing for over a year and a half <laughs> and I played every day except for one day and I personally cannot get this missing mass and it's frustrating watching people like I just opened an astro chest and look what I got ice rod <laughs> like thanks a lot like that doesn't help me <laughs> so that's all I'm missing um but I can tell people, people are like, oh, Umbra Sunder is coming out. Oh, new things are coming out. Nah, not, nothing new coming out. They, they've, they've said it in the last two Dawn Camps. They're not trying to drop in more gear. They think they have more than enough gear um, for when the game comes out. That they want to save everything else for when the game comes out. So a lot of the cool stuff that we know is coming, um, we ain't going to see it. I'm at 7,000. So, dearest lore, they're at 130. I'm trying to get to 122. <laughs> I don't know who they are. I don't know why they play so much, but I'm the, probably the person who plays the most, second most, because of where I am level-wise, and I can't, I can't even hang with those guys, man. It's like it's insane. That's how far. Literally, when they added in the extra. Wanted um thirty levels. Dearest Law was at one twenty seven when that started. Dearest Law already gained three levels. Dearest Law, I guarantee you, is having to earn fifty thousand points, close to fifty thousand points per level. If it's not forty eight, forty nine, fifty, I'd be shocked. Because what I do is every time I hit the next level. I purposely start playing lower and lower level, I mean, ascension conquest points giving you stuff so my ascension levels move up perf damn near perfectly so I can actually see what the number is. Like I try to only beat it by 7 or 10. <laughs> like I don't even try to blow by it because I want to see it as close as possible so I can tell you what the next one is. To get to 123, it's only going to be, I'm pretty sure. The next one's gonna be 44k plus. I think it moves up by 10,000. No, let me see. I don't know. It moves up by a thousand every time. It moves up by a thousand every time. Um, and this is because of something I said in the next C. They it was still gonna be exponential, and they decided to tweak it to make it move up like a thousand at a time in the higher levels because originally it was supposed to jump higher because the people at 110. Or 113, 114, they're at 130,000. By the time you reach 118, you're at 141,000. So all of the new ones after it moves up by a thousand each time or so, or it's 900, something like that. Before, it was moving at a much steeper clip. That's why, in the middle of 118, I knew I was doing around 40,000 k to get to the next level and the next one was 42,000 and the one after that is 43,000 so I'm sure the next one's gonna be around 44,000 so yeah it's just gonna keep going up it's gonna be a pain in the ass um did the marks drop oh wow it's a thousand marks here these all used to be 2,000 Look at that! You get a lot of them, but you, you get less. These all used to be 2,000. They all dropped to 1,500. 
this used to be 2000 also so a lot of this cool stuff here these trinkets what's confusing everybody is this used to say trinkets now this is armor might be armor coming um might be armor this is the paradigm we still don't know what the paradigm does <laughs> But we do know what the Echo Bias does. And this gun has been seen like all the way back in 0 0.8. That's how long this gun's been inside the game. Um, so Echo Bias landing the second shot on the same target deals bonus damage. Hopefully they fix the aiming because the aiming sucks right now. H hitting two shots in a row is like magic. Like it's, it's, it's sorcery. It's not something you do easily with snipers. <laughs> Um, the paradigm, the echo biased. Um, so these are the, these are the new stuff that we still haven't seen. So that's coming in later. Um, I'll show you a few more stuff. That's kind of cool, but yeah, none of this, like none of the, none of the variants and none of those are coming out before global release. None of that. So if anybody who's looking to, to to get new gear or new primals ain't gonna happen um the honol 3 uh chain gunned with a massive clip and longer range so if it's a gun with a longer range i think it's going to be 10 or 9.6 because the poor poor splintered fate has just been dropping in range over and over again. I can understand Splinter Fate dropping to, to give the flamethrower in it space, but I thought what they had it at at 9.3 versus 10 was fair. Now it's 8.8. .8. I personally cannot play Splinter Fate anymore. I started using it when it was 10.6 and now it's down to 8.8. .8. I cannot even fathom how to play that gun. It's just, I miss people because I expect my range to be longer <laughs> i miss people so yeah no thanks like that gun's like gone for me until i have a way to upgrade it to get it to if there's one of them increased range as an infusion if not i don't know what the hell to do with it because it's pointless right now to play me i can't play it um the impact conjugate very similar to echo bias um takes additional damage for hitting for each hit you land up to 10 hits so the impact um conjugate and the echo bias are in like the same kind of family of guns that's pretty interesting um and then this one is the flame script burns targets it hits just a little bit so knowing that it's a flat cannon it has a natural slow yeah kind of weird right <laughs> knowing that it's a flat cannon it has a natural slow and i guarantee on infusion you'll gain the ability to burn stuff why no one knows but that's how it basically worked they're doing a weapons pass over the next two patches 0 0.17 and 0 0.18 hopefully they'll get rid of that hopefully they'll get rid of slows hopefully they'll let auto aim be decent doesn't have to be awesome like it used to be just a lot better than it is now auto aim should not be primary job shouldn't be to make you miss that's not what it is keep the game casual because it was so much fun before aiming became this super annoying thing in the game that doesn't add to the game it actually takes away from it now they, they got to get it back to that because this just that don't feel good it don't feel good i don't care what they say it don't feel good specifically i don't mind aiming long range weapons because i didn't know that sniper rifles couldn't be played without aiming that's why i always used to hate the primal eye because i don't want my gun firing while I'm trying to aim at something, I'm wasting bullets. It's a freaking sniper rifle. I don't care how fast it is or how long it takes to reload. I want to be able to aim my shots to hit things. 
that's how I play the objection. That's why I like the prodigal. That's why I like the um, Lumia prodigal. All of those are aiming snipers. It's not primal eye. <laughs> While you're aiming, your shots are flying everywhere. That's not cool. <laughs> the only only way you can really play that gun effectively is with a controller and it's still annoying because while you have to aim to get your shots to line up the bots do not so anytime they're using a primal eye every shots from the primal eye if you're not dodging them are all hitting you that's just stupid the computer the, the bots have a better chance using the primal eye than you do so yeah fix the auto aim let the auto aim be decent let the auto aim not make you miss let when people aim and they hit you somebody came up with an idea that was actually interesting if you aim to hit somebody they give you a little bit of extra damage you know why because that means you're spending the time and you're using the skill to actually get people i'm 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 all for that put auto aim the way it was and let people aim to get more damage because right now the way they do the shotgun at point blank range if i'm not aiming a shotgun I don't get I don't necessarily get full damage or even hit the thing that's in front of me shotguns work better if I actually aim them at a distance than if I use them for point-blank range how does that even make any sense it's a shotgun <laughs> but that's where we are this is also saying armor this used to be a trinket this is also saying armor medium armor and then there comes an interesting weapon called the weakness bomb so weakness bomb causes enemies to do less damage for a while <laughs> interesting um from guns blazing um they keep saying that they're working on it um from what i heard um even cloaking mentioned it in this in the chat that this pass they're, they're doing a, a, a rebalancing patch on the on everything in the game um this one is concentrating heavily on primals and then they said that 0 0.18 is supposed to concentrate more on the weapons in the other gear right even though they're not really focusing on them there's still going to be enough changes where it's going to feel like they did a pass on them anyway so that's the one thing I that's why I keep trying to tell people hold off on upgrading hold off on doing stuff because you you don't know how the changes are going to be and you don't know how it's going to feel per se so you might be making you might be like ah oh, I'm, I'm going to level this thing up as fast as I can and then in the next patch it's it's total doo doo so you, you want to hold off you want to just make sure but they keep saying that guns blazing is being tweaked the through all these patches and that's what the feedback is so important that's why it's important to have a lot of people playing because you want people to say like whoa what the hell happened to this gun this gun used to be great this gun sucks now you want you want to hear that um like i want them to add in three shots to the triplane i want it to be a shotgun i want it to have multiple shots the thing used to shoot eight i wanted to shoot six minimum like in its burst it it, it just doesn't look right shooting three bring the damage down bring it up a little to, to compensate for the two it lost bring it back up to like six i rather play it that way because it feels bad like it doesn't feel fun to play it, it it's like a, a a mad gun like it used to be cool it used to be deadly and annoying but it used to be cool this version sucks this version is just like uh, <laughs> it's like you don't you don't even want to play it because it doesn't even have cool effects anymore it used to actually fire eight bullets why would i want something that went from from eight to three why, why would that be better it was it was a cool gun it was a strong gun it used to help people out a lot and then this is the pyro pyrophoric mandate this is the freezing um flamethrower it fires blue so usually when things have a blue color it means that they're gonna slow you down 
that's why it's so annoying that when you fire the negate siren it doesn't slow automatically it just it should <laughs> that's why it's super frustrating when you fire the mutiny song it doesn't the bullets don't explode they used to <laughs> They they gotta get rid of this um getting getting um abilities through infusion for some weapons and then other weapons are getting light out infusions when they infuse. Tetrad is an example. Level one Tetrad infusion lights out. Borson's a good example. Level one infusion on on Borson lights out. Level one infusion on Negate Siren. I'm as good as a flat cannon at level one. It's a stronger slow, but I can do exactly what a flat cannon can do for nothing. How does that make any sense? Why isn't flat cannons getting slows as as infusions? Why is flat cannon getting slows for free? If you put this stupid slow in an infusion, I'll stop complaining. I just do not understand how it's slow is a free feature. And everything else is paying for it. Every other gun in this game that gets a slow has to infuse it. Everyone. But flat cannons. <laughs> it's annoying. <laughs> it's super, super annoying. Anybody in Paragon? Nope. Nobody in Coliseum either. Oh, speaking of Coliseum. So. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping every patch they change the stupid the heck out of those things because they fix snipers. People are complaining that there's an issue with snipers. Here's the issue: you still miss more than you you used to. That that's the thing. Um, I have to play, even though the prodigal has a better reload time. I rather play the Lumia prodigal because the way my build works. It's designed to give me a lot of ammo back real fast. So with my Lumia Prodigal and my and my Negate Siren, I get up to 13 shots with it. With the build that I run. Ooh, the 100. I like this. Name of a show and a really good. It's funny when you had double damage, and you're fighting an overseer. Uh, you're fighting a core behemoth. This actually works, <laughs> like you just did right there. Wow, that sucked. I usually can get up into the 50s. The Coliseum is full of surprises. Here they come. Like, if, if mods are completely gone in the next patch, I'm really worried about guns like um, the Negate Siren and, uh, and the Renegade. I love offensive entombment. <laughs> I love it. It's like one of my favorite features. If I don't have that, if I don't have that ability, like the mods are gone, and I I don't have that trait on these guns, I'm not gonna be real happy. I'm gonna be pissed because <laughs> it's part of my build. I literally don't play anything without offensive entombment. And every one of my mods, like for this gun, except for one, has it. <laughs> the Finlay is the other gun that has it. It's Finlay, Negate Siren, and Renegade are the three guns with offensive entombment. And what offensive entombment does, it makes your heavy behave like a primary. It just has a much slower reload time. 
you gain one bullet over like an epic I believe over 5.4 seconds yes this is exactly what I wanted thank goodness this is exactly what I was looking for this is actually why I wanted to play it I'm trying to get 25 of these I get this so rarely that's why I try to play at least once once in a while it's just I get frustrated playing three or four games of this fighting twins and core behemoths all the time <laughs> whoa that is dangerous Nicely done. I love the fact that you're going after the bots. Let's get better than that, my friend. You really should. Getting lit up. I don't think so. I do this game and it just killed it. I did all that work. <laughs> I have no clue. Because if they get rid of the mods, I think what's going to start happening is I guess then what they're going to do is only some guns are going to have them. Because right now, in your head, it's really easy to wrap around. I get a mod. I have three traits in the front, three traits in the middle, five at the end. So, even if I just get one mod, I can pick up other mods, and I can still pick and choose what I want. So, what would be the, how would you, if you got rid of mods, where would the trades go? That means every gun wouldn't have the flexibility that they currently have right now. 